Today, we're talking about playing cards. Hi, I'm John. Welcome to this channel where we are serious about play and games. And in this series, we will be looking into game design knowledge. Many of these examples will be about board games. But the knowledge is usable no matter what kind of games you're doing. If it's board games, computer games, LARPs, role-playing games or something else. Let's talk about playing cards. The common deck of cards had its origins in 15th century Europe. It probably originated somewhere in China. It's a piece of paper with information on one side and then a common backside. Making it possible to stack them into a pile of cards. And that way you can have a deck which makes it possible to draw information randomly. But unlike dice, when you draw one card, it's no longer in the deck, making it not possible to draw that card again. While if you roll a die, you can always get the same number. And this creates two very different kinds of randomness. A common deck of cards has four suits, hearts, diamonds, spades, and clubs, in two different colors, black and red. In each suit, there's number one till 13, or rather, the numbers 1 to 10 and 3 special cards. And this makes it possible to separate the deck into many different combinations. It can be two similarly sized uh, decks of reds and blacks, or it can be four different ones uh, according to the suits, for example. You can also separate the, the painted cards from the common cards, for example. But this is in no way the only kinds of decks there are. For example, these cards are from the game What's Up? And Unlike a common deck of cards, this has information on both sides, making it possible to do other types of interactions. But the most common way is still to have a card with one backside and one front side. And this makes it possible to do a lot of different things. For example, you can place it with the backside up in the table, hiding the information from everyone. Or you can place it with the front side up in the table, making the information visible for everyone. And this also makes it possible to have your cards on your hand, giving you the information while hiding it from the rest of the game. And thinking about the physicality of the cards like this makes it possible to do other things, such as in the game Hanabi, where you play with the cards front side towards the audience, and hiding the information from yourself while everybody else can see what is going on. So, when designing for cards, remember the physicality of the cards and what that does to the game. Also remember the type of randomness that is created by using cards, and use that to your advantage. And one last thing. It's common to do things in a certain order. So for example, we usually draw cards in the beginning of our phase, and then we discard them in the end of our phase. And this feels natural to us. So by thinking about what feels natural to us, you can make the game easier to remember and easier to play. So that's it for now. I hope this gave you some new knowledge and some new thoughts and ideas of what you could do. If you liked this, you can check out more of the series over here, or you can check another random video over here. And do feel free to subscribe if you really like it. With that, go create, and I see you around.